He has to seek the help of somebody sitting in the United Kingdom today. <coughs> but his government writes to him saying, sorry, we did all we could. Yes, I agree. It is a very insensitive way of handling a situation uh, as brutal as this. And uh, let me tell you, the Pakistani army is known for its brutalities. In fact, General Tikha Khan in 1971 earned the epithet that he, he was the master of brutalities in Bangladesh. Pakistan army, a very large section of the Pakistani army has been so radicalized that they, for them it is not a war, it is a religious war. And in a religious war, they have to do all these things. So this is the training probably as the, um, uh, Mr. J.C. Sharma said, it is part of their training. So there is no point in hiding behind the fig leaf uh, of uh, bilateral talks, which is one, you tell me, one issue with Pakistan which we have been able to solve bilaterally, absolutely nothing. Especially when the Pakistani establishment right from their home minister down to the prime minister takes up this stand that we have done no brutality at all. While the people who actually did all this, committed all these brutalities have been actually decorated in the Pakistani army establishment. This is exactly what has happened. So I don't think there is any reason why we should not be invoking the Geneva Conventions. But we are signatories to Geneva Conventions, so is Pakistan. And there is nothing wrong in raising these issues internationally. No. We are unnecessarily... Oh, no. We are unnecessarily afraid of certain ir certain bureaucratic tangles, and we did oh, no. not be so. Number one. Number two. I think our our inability to impose a punitive, retributive action on all these brutality is what is coming back home to roost. Therefore. There has to be a military solution also to all these things. You see, so I, we will have I, to take it in a very comprehensive manner. No, the question is, what the government has done now is absolute insensitivity. Oh no. no, you see, this is a situation today, and and I'm, you know our hearts are with uh, with you, Dr. Kalia, because consider this. Dr. Kalia had to approach the Supreme Court of India. General Malik just coming to you. He had to approach the Supreme Court of <laughs> India, pleading. Here's a martyr's father. He's pleading, not for the life of his son. He's pleading for respect and honor to his son. He's pleading that the case of his torture be transferred to the International Court of Justice. The highest court of India gave a notice to the central government in December 2012, giving it 10 weeks to respond over the way forward vis-a-vis -vis Saurav Kalia. It has gov taken the government this long to give a categorical response on whether or not this matter can be transferred to the International Court of Justice. In other words, there is no respect today for a martyr's father's and martyr's family's pain, suffering that they go through. And that is what hurts us the most today. And one of our viewers is writing this, Dr. Kalia, and I want to read this out. Somebody is writing this. Dr. Kalia, can you hear me? Yes, please. You know, one of our viewers has sent me a message. He says, it's sad to see Dr. Kalia again and again. But what is he asking? Not for the life of his son, just respect and honor for not only his son, but an Indian martyr too. And I'm getting many messages like this. Can I tell you this, Dr. Kalia? So you must know that your fight, and I tell you this every time, you must know that your fight is not alone. Now we are getting some callers, and maybe some of them would like to speak to uh, say something to Dr. Kali as well. Our first caller is from Jammu uh, and uh, Govardhan is calling from Jammu. Yes, Govardhan? Yeah, Mr. Arnav. Yes, sir. First of all, this politician has made this country. Let the people to die, their seats should be safe. And the respect for armies in an airport, I have seen with my own eyes Yes, the police are going inside the airport in their own cars. And ASI standing on the gate is allowing them the robbies. Even a rank of GOC came to enter the airport, ASI has stopped him and he, go, he went with the foot. He even not absoluted him. Yeah. They have made army, I don't know to use the word, I have gone to a deputation also abroad to the defense. Well, there I have seen. I have seen with my own eyes, I don't want to disclose because tomorrow I will be harassed if you disclose my name, number, everything. They have the profit in business deals, 
We are angry with them. We are a good person. They can sell our souls, our body to earn the money. Well, today, Gaurdhaji, go, 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 let's restrict our... I, I, I appreciate your sentiment, but just restri let's restrict our comments to the case of Saurav Kalia. And our next caller, one more caller is coming in. Mr. Korean is calling in from Bangalore. Mr. Korean, good evening. Hi, Arnab. Good evening. Good evening, sir. I have a few points. First, that even giving adequate proof on uh, that Pakistan on its complicity in all these activities, yeah. it, they don't accept it, one. Secondly, it's clear that any dialogue at any level does not have any effect. We are deluding ourselves that a stable park is good for India. But please understand that Pak is a failed state. So what I feel is that we should cut all diplomatic ties, ban trade, no cricket diplomacy. I think that's uh, that's uh, you know your, that's uh, you know your uh, strong point of view. However, you know the the point is General Malik. Whatever we have done is not enough. Uh, by the way, thank you very much, Korean, for calling. You know. Uh, uh, the point is, General Malik, some people are also wanting some more detailed questions from you. Uh, Captain, Captain F uh, Kalia's father, Dr. Kalia, says the External Affairs Ministry informed them under the Right to Information Act that the government had conveyed this anguish and anger of the Indian people to the Foreign Minister during his visit to Delhi in 1999. And an aid memoir was also sent to Pakistan. So, tell me, General Malik, is anguish and anger all we can do? All we can do today, when our boy has come back, um, <laughs> come back, you know, mutilated, is we convey our anguish and anger and tell, tell Dr. Kalia after 50, 14 years that Dr. Kalia, thank you for waiting for 14 years. We conveyed our anguish 14 years back. I mean, how ironical and sad is that, General Malik? How sad is that? Uh, uh, Arnob, <coughs> Arnob, now that you have... Uh widen the scope of this whole dialogue and you have mentioned we are discussing uh, Captain Kalia's case but there have been similar cases uh, even of beheading as you know uh, subsequently. The fact is that Pakistan is not listening to us yeah. because of our policy of appeasement which, which was mentioned by uh, Maruf uh, and all the time uh, we, we are only reacting to the situation that they create unless we show some spine and unless we take some hard measures Pakistan is not going to listen to us and nobody in the international community also is going to listen to us I am quite certain that even if we go to Geneva Convention it will carry on with some bureaucratic tangles and nothing much will come out I think what we require today is not a policy of appeasement and we should give it back to them Sometimes This is exactly what all of us had said, that when uh, Manmohan Singh meets Nawaz Sharif, he should speak hard language. He should give him a notice, rather than saying, Sab theek hai, okay, the DGMOs are not going to solve the problem, let me show you that. We are just refusing, and I can blame both the governments for it, the previous one as well as the present one, for... See, we for, for adopting a policy of appeasement <coughs> with Pakistan. I think it's time that we change our policy. No, no, but we uh, are allowing both, ourselves. Uh, management no, no, we, of the no, LOC no, and the border. No, no, in this, in this case, we are allowing ourselves to be insulted. No, Maruf. Or no. We are allowing ourselves to be insulted. We have clearly or failed no. to take this case up directly with Pakistan. The government is basically saying, Maruf, today that we did what we did 14 years back. <coughs> The gov you know, we, assurances have not no, worked. Yeah, and we are, I, we are I, talking yeah, about a prison. So many other cases also. No, no, but we are talking about prisoners of war. We are not talking about the status of Kashmir or plebiscite. Why are we so much on the defensive? Why are we scared? Uh, so what if we lose at the International no, Court of is, Justice? That, Why don't we go to town? Why don't we have a press conference outside the United Nations building saying this is what Pakistan does to our soldiers? I mean, if nothing else, expose them in the entire global media. But you should have the will to do that, Maruf. Or you no, should have the I will have to do always, that. Or no, Ornab, as, Ornab as, as you know only too well, I have always insisted, name and shame them. Yeah, name exactly. Name and shame them. And I maintain, even, I, I maintain even now, that the Shimla <laughs> Agreement, where does the Shimla Agreement say that you will not stand up for the men who are willing to die for you? 
under the garb of the Shimla agreement, you are dishonoring the commitment of the soldier to this country and its sovereign territory. And you are making a mockery of the sacrifice that he makes with his life. And I think our government, instead of giving lip service that we will do everything for the armed forces, must look into the mirror and do soul searching. I say this for a number of successive governments, not just this government. We stand today a nation which is strong but portrayed as weak because we have a weak leadership. And if there is an assumption in South Bloc that the Shimla agreement and if we take matters further will embarrass us because the UN resolutions will be thrown on our faces. For heaven's sake, read the UN resolution of 13th August 1948. It is in India's favor. It does not compromise our interest in any way. And so therefore, if we need to go back to it, let us go back, but let us give the man on the ground his due. We are embarrassing see, today, them, their families. We will well, reach how, a point how do, how do you, where how people do you, will be not, the people will be unwilling we, we, to die for this country. We, we talk about, you know, we talk about our soldiers as being the most selfless citizens of this country who are willing to give up their lives for this country. And what message do they get today that one, when one of their own, a brave Indian soldier, uh, is killed by the Pakistanis, his body is mutilated and it is sent back and all that we can do as a country of 1.2 billion people, ladies and gentlemen, with the fourth largest army in the world, all that we can do is send a scrap of paper to a country opposite us which mocks us back 14 years later. We write a letter to the father 14 years later saying we wrote a letter on your behalf 14 years back and we can't do very much more. Effectively, we are saying that today. So I think there is need for re-evaluation. If somebody is sitting in South Block thinks, I've got a super technical argument to counter this, then they really don't know what they are talking about. And I have a few callers. Uh, Dr. Kalia, by the way, just stay on with us. We have one caller, Mr. Roy is calling, and he's calling from Delhi. Mr. Roy, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Anab Goswami. Good evening, sir. And good, good, evening, good evening to all your panelists. I've been intently listening to all the arguments which have been put forward by everyone. First of all, I emphasize and sympathize with Dr. Kalia and all the other people who are suffering like him because their, their kit and kin suffer the same fate like Captain Kalia. I am aware of it because I am also from the armed forces. I'll tell you later on as to who I am. But the fact remains like to say, charity begins at home. Are we honoring our own armed forces first? Before you take up the causes of people who are, su who are suffering like this, none of the governments till now has reposed that faith 